Hey guys, it's your girl Kim, and thanks for tuning back in. This is Single in Christ. If this is your first time joining us, this is a space for those who are saved, single, and patiently waiting on the Lord to deliver his promises, whatever that promise may be. And if this is your first time tuning in, thank you for joining me. And if this is not your first time tuning in, thank you for returning. As always, I am broadcasting from Charlotte, North Carolina on WYTV7 Christian Broadcasters Network. And as you know, if you've been following me for a while, I'm continuing talking about dating and things that relate to dating and dating kind of from a single in Christ perspective, right? So today I wanted to discuss how to know the one. Or when you're dating someone and you're just not sure how to move forward, how if you should progress. So I just want to give you five quick steps, tips, tricks that you can ask yourself or that you can do so you can make sure that you are progressing with someone who you can maybe see yourself with, who you may think is the one, but you're not quite sure, or who you're saying, this is the one making sure that that real that person that you're in the relationship with that they are the one okay so one i really want you to ask yourself if you are considering this person for marriage and you're just not sure i really want you to ask yourself who are they who is this person listen i'm not asking you to say what they can do I'm not asking you to list out their accomplishments. I'm not telling you to tell anybody their plan, their five-year plan, how what steps they're taking to get to that plan. I'm asking you to ask yourself, who is this person? Who are they? What is what characteristics do they have? Are they displaying fruits of the spirit? Are they a kind person? Are they a loving person? Are they disciplined? Do they show compassion? They're like, who are they? Who are they at their core? Not what they have done, not what they have accomplished, not what they can do or what they aspire to do or what they even have the potential to do. But who is this person really? And once you get that answer, is that the type of person you want in your life for the rest of your life if that person is mean if that person talks bad about people if that person is a gossiper if that person is not generous or not giving at all is that the type of person you want in your life for the rest of your life Now, all of these tips and tricks, you're really going to have to take a step back and evaluate the person. And not only evaluate the person, but evaluate yourself and what you really want. Because if you don't know what you really want or what you should have in your life, then how can you ever determine if this person should be with you for the rest of your life, if this person is the one, right? So... Step one, who are they? Who is this person? Evaluate their character. What fruits are they displaying? Who are they? Not what they've done, not what they can do, not what they're going to do, but who are they? We often measure people by what what accomplishments they've achieved, how much success they've gained. But on the inside, this person is mean and mad and angry and hurtful. Do you really want that, sis? Do you really want that for your life? I don't. I don't. And I hope you don't either. So make sure you take the time to clearly evaluate their character and not just what they've done or what they can do or the success they have. Okay, so the next one is how do you feel about them? And now I don't want you to get too caught up in your feelings because we are definitely called to be sober minded and we're called to be vigilant. So, um, but I don't want to discount feelings. Feelings are very real. We all have feelings and they definitely play a factor in 
you know, our decision making. So, but I don't want this to be the sole factor. I don't want this to even be the majority weight that you give your feelings because feelings are fickle. Feelings can change. Feelings are based on our own perception and our own understanding. And so that's literally why God says, do not lean to your own understanding, but in all your ways, acknowledge me and I will make your path straight. Because our own understanding and our own perception and our own feelings can lead us to a crazy place sometimes. And you know I'm talking right. You know I'm telling the truth when you get some kind of crazy feeling or he may not have texted you all day. And it's just because he was busy and he just didn't have the chance to text back. And now you got all these thoughts in your mind, all these feelings, and you talk to him and he explains the entire situation and you're like, oh. So when I say don't put too much weight, don't put too much stock into your feelings, please do not. But you do really have to examine your feelings. Like, do you love this person? Do you even like this person? Do you want to spend time with them? Do you like spending time with them? Do they get on your nerves? Like, do they annoy you? What do you feel about this person? How do you feel about this person? Do you feel like it might grow? Do you feel like it's going to stay stagnant? Do you feel like it's going to dwindle? Do you think your feelings going to die? Like, how do you really feel? Even though we shouldn't put too much stock into our feelings, we do have to take account that you can't be with somebody that annoys you, that gets on your last nerves every day for the rest of your life. I don't, I wouldn't want to do that. And I don't want you to do that either. But so you have to make sure that this person is for you. You have to make sure that they don't get on your nerves, that you do love them and not the selfish kind of love, not the love that I like you and I love you because you do this for me and because you make me feel this way and because you have done all these things for me. No, I want you to examine your love and make sure that it is not coming from a selfish place, making sure that it's because this person, despite what they've done, despite what they may do, despite what they are doing, you love them. It's unconditional, it's compassionate, it's caring, it's kind, it's a covering type of love that they, you won't expose them, that you won't put them out there, that you will keep them, that you will love them. And you have to make sure that love is gentle and pure and kind. You know, all those things that Corinthians 13 love. And you have to make sure that you love them and not only that you love them from an unselfish place from a place where it's not all about you and that's why you love them because of how they make you feel you have to also make sure that they love you from an unselfish place and it's not because of the things you're doing for them or the things you're saying to them or the way you make them feel like all those butterflies and tinglies on the inside which is fine it's fantastic it's great everybody loves that little feeling but that feeling doesn't last forever all that unicorn and rainbows and you know glitter dust at the end of the day somebody's gonna have to pick up that unicorn poop and sweep up that glitter dust and if y'all not trying to do that together or somebody is annoying or not willing to work or not doing something your feelings gonna be you're gonna be feeling some type of way so you have to make sure that the love is not selfish that the love is selfless on both of your parts and that you really feel like you could be with this person for the rest of your life because that's what marriage is right till death do us part so make sure that you are feeling not putting too much stock into it though but that you do actually even like this person that you want to be with this person so step three now that we've got the feelings out of the way, now that we found out who they are and that they are compatible with what we want for our lives, we have to take a step back and make an objective observation about who they really are. Can you see them? Even if you didn't love them, if you know you didn't know anything or you know this, you know about them, but can you take an objective step back, feelings aside, what they've done for you aside, and say, this is a good person. This is a person I can see myself with. Do your goals align? 
Do you have the same goals? Can you see yourselves growing together? Do your purposes align? Let's, you know, just take a step back. Yes, you may love them. Yes, you may like them so, 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 so much. But if they are going in a different direction than you are, once you take that step back and honestly look at their life, honestly look at how they are living their lives, is that what you want? Is that what you need? Is that how you see your life? The life that God has called you to, the life that God is pulling you to, the life that God has directed you to, is that where God is calling? Is God calling you and him in the same direction? And even if you're not on the same exact path, are you willing to support each other? Or do your purposes complement each other? Do you and him have enough in common to actually make this thing work for the long haul. For the whole nine yards, for going all the way down to the end zone, can y'all, when you take a step back and look at, look at him objectively and say, okay, he has this goal and he's accomplished it. He has this goal and he's accomplished it. Okay, now his character is good. He's loving, he's kind, you know, I like him and I love him. And now I'm taking a step back and saying, can I still, even though I like him, even though I love him, even though he's a good person, do we match? Do we have enough in common to keep this thing going? Do our conversations spark interest? Can we talk for hours or is it just dull, dry, what you've been doing all day? fine how are you good you know like you have to make sure because this for your life sis your life the rest of your life and i just really 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 want to want to make sure that we myself included are making the best choice possible that we are making sure that we are guided by god which leads me to my next step which is what does god say about this person what does god say have you even prayed about it? Have you even, I know some women who have fasted for their husbands, who have fasted to make sure they were hearing from God correctly. Like, what does God say? Are you in a place in a spiritually where you are continuously and regularly and consistently and persistently doing what God tells you to do, praying, being obedient to his word, doing what he's called you to do. Are you doing those things? Are you making sure that you are reading his word? Are you making sure that you're being compassionate and kind to those people in the world? Like God said that they would know you because of your love, because of your generosity, because of how you treat people. Are you that person? Can people come to you and say, oh yeah, she's different. She's the light. She's the of the earth she's christian like she's a follower of god you have to make sure that you are in a solid place and you have to make sure that man is also in a solid place in god is like is he a believer let's start there that's simple does he even believe that jesus is the savior that jesus died and rose from the dead to save us from our sins does he even believe that does he believe it? Has he confessed it? Do his actions line up with what he says? Does God approve of him? So, of course, we got the unequally yoked. And that is on so many levels, not even just believer. The believer is the first level. Does he believe? Yes. Okay, now, do your goals align? Do your purposes align? Yes, now, do your lifestyles align? Do your, do your lives match? Do your lives complement each other? Does God say yes for the purpose and the path that he has laid out for you? Will this man help? Will this man hinder? What does God say? So again, you cannot lean to your own understanding because we don't know the heart. We can't always see the heart. We may be blinded by our infatuation. We may be blinded by our affection. We may be blinded by something that we have done with them. We just, because sometimes we just get so in love with somebody. We just like them so much that we are blind to everything else in them. And it's okay that, you know, sometimes he's not always going to be the best person. And so I don't want you to confuse 
a character flaw with just, you know, something that somebody has to work on and they can work on and improve. But if this person has, you know, is not a believer, no. If this person is going to take you off the path that God has for you and that God has set out for you, no. If this person is trying to convince you and pressure you to do things that you know God would not approve of, no. You just have to make sure that God approves. And now I don't know if God says yes. I don't know if God says no. I don't know. I know for me, I've definitely heard no's, but I haven't heard yes. I haven't, no, I have not heard yes, but I know some people have heard a yes. So however God speaks to you, you make sure you get into that space where he can speak to you and you hear him clearly and you obey him immediately. If he says no, move on he's going he's saving you from something he's saving you from heartache he's saving you from pain he's saving you from maybe a possible divorce he's saving you from something if you just listen to him so make sure that god approves and the next thing i want you to do is what do your friends and family say about him ask yourself what do your friends and family say about him and this is another one that i don't want you to put too much stock into because of course we shouldn't you know, let our opinions be swayed by the opinions of others. But I do, as I always say, I do believe that a circle, a support group, you know, people around you who are praying with you and for you and who are godly can, you know, I think they can give you wise counsel. And I think they can use their knowledge and their wisdom and their past experiences to help you avoid heartache, to help you avoid something that you may not see. What do your friends and family say? What do the community say? His reputation does matter. And, you know, reputation precedes him. And character, your, the reputation is built on his character. So if he's a liar and a deceiver and he's known out here for being that, like, why are you with him? Even if he does not like that to you, do you really want someone who treats everybody else bad but treats you right? You know, why would you want that for anybody else? We are supposed to be lifting up each other. And I really, really want you to be in that relationship you desire. Sis. I know, I know you want your husband. I know you want your family. I know you want that God ordained love that'll last and be happy. But you have to, have to, have to make sure that you are doing it in the way that God approves of, that your friends and family aren't seeing something that you may not see, that you like their family and friends are saying so many things about him but you don't see that why do you not see that why do they see that you have to ask yourself these questions and take your feelings out of it take your feelings out of it completely yes i told you before to weigh your feelings and i told you not to put too much stock into it your feelings do matter i don't want to discount feelings but you have to make sure you're looking at this from an objective and sober mind. You have to stay vigilant. You have to make sure that you're not being tricked, that you're not being deceived, that you're not doing, you're not trying to be with a counterfeit just because you're so, so ready for this thing that God has promised you. You have to make sure that when you do talk to your friends and family, that they say, if the, the good things they say, why do you say those good things? Like, what about him makes you say that he's, you know, stable and he will be a provider or that he's loving and kind and caring? Like, how do you see that? What is he doing to make you say he's all those good things? And on the flip side, what is he doing to make you say all these bad things about him? Because you may not see it either way. You may just see all the glitter and the gold because you're so in love and you're so ready. You're so ready. And I do not want your readiness. I do not want your this thing that is right in front of you just to appear like it is great when it is really boo-boo you know what i mean he's really the dusty crusty crusty man trash man but you know he's appearing all fine and like gold and he's appearing like the best thing that happened but really he's the crusty dusty rusty and we do not want that i do not want that i don't want that for you i don't want that for me and so i'm all these things i'm telling you i am doing myself Yes, I'm dating. Yes, I don't know if nobody's one. I don't know. I don't even know if I truly believe in the concept of the one. But I do believe that God has given me the ability to choose the, my mate 
and choose based on these criteria that he has given me. So that's why I'm sharing it with you. I have to make sure that my friends and family approve. I have to make sure that they see him as somebody that is good for me, that is godly, that is holy, that will be able to be a good father and a good husband and a good brother to other brothers in Christ, a good brother to other sisters in Christ, you know, a spiritual father, you know, somebody who can lead me, somebody who can guide me, somebody who can be the spiritual leader of my home, somebody who will raise my children up to know the Lord. Like this isn't just about me. This is about a legacy that I'm building. This is about my destiny in Christ. This is about my children's destiny in Christ. So this can't just be any old body. This has to be that somebody that will compliment me, that will, and when I say compliment me, I don't mean like give me compliments to make me feel good or to, you know, to about my beauty or my body, whatever. I'm saying compliment me like the areas where I lack, he has, he is strong in the areas where I'm lacking and I'm strong in the areas where he's lacking. Like we compliment each other. Like I'm the woman, so I know my role and he's the man, so he knows his role. And I'm the woman because I can't do everything a man can do. And he's the man because he can't do everything a woman can do. So we have to make sure that we fit, that we match, that we mesh, and that we complement each other. We're like Adam and Eve, like coming out of the rib, like Adam was made. And he called him, and he called her woman because he came, she came from man. Like we have to make sure that we fit. We have to make sure that we are partners, that we were working together, that God gave us this assignment and we are determined to carry this out together for the rest of our lives until God calls us home. So we, I have to make sure, and we, sis, we have to make sure that we are looking at this thing, not from just a love, not, not from just a love view, not from just a character level view, not from just a goal view, but definitely from a God view, definitely from a view of we are creating a legacy, we are creating a generation, we are trying to do things differently, we are trying to create wealth, we are trying to build up our community, we are trying to get God's love, we're trying to get as many people saved as possible. You have to know what you want. You have to know what you want. And I honestly think that when you ask your friends and family, if they know you and they know what you want and they know who you are, they'll be able to discern from an objective standpoint who he is and how he compliments you, how he fits with you. And I'm not telling you to just ask any old body. I'm not asking you to ask your coworker, you know, for two weeks. Like you're going to have to ask somebody who knows you, who's been with through with you who's prayed with you who know who knows you you know somebody you've known for some years you know so that they can honestly give you an opinion somebody you trust basically somebody you trust with you know being vulnerable with them and somebody who will give you the honest truth good or bad or good and bad like hey he's good in these areas but these areas need improvement but I feel like you know you're gonna have to take it and you're gonna have to weigh it of course for yourself and make sure you're doing everything you can to make sure that you're doing this for your life like you're doing this to please God and you're doing this because this is what you want and I'm a staunch believer that although you should love your husband and love and marriage and all those things are, are wonderful I cannot and I will not base my decision to marry someone solely because I love them. That is not enough for me. And so that's why I believe I prayed and God gave me these criteria, these things like evaluate his character. Who is he? Not just what he's accomplished, not just how successful he is, but who is he really? Um, how do I feel about him? Do I love him? Does he get on my nerves? Can I live with what even if he does get on my nerves, is that little thing can, that little thing, can I live with that for the rest of my life? Um, can, when I take a step back and evaluate him objectively, do our purposes align? Do, can we go to distance in God? Do, what does God say about him? You know, is he a God person? Is he a godly man? Does he have a godly character? Is he exhibiting the fruits of the spirit? Like, what does God really say about him? And what do my family and friends say about him? Is he good? Has he even wanted to meet them? Has he bulked at the idea of even meeting my friends and family? Because he's not 
ready because he's not whatever it doesn't really matter because that's one of my requirements i really need you to meet my people so my people can tell me because i trust their wisdom i trust their guidance and i believe they're being led by the holy spirit and so i really need you to meet them so i can make my decision based on the totality of the circumstances based on what god says based on what they say mostly based on what god says because of course god is the ruler right god is sovereign god knows what's best for me and i have to examine people's motives sometimes and that's just too much but because of all these things because of all these factors i just I just know I can't base it solely on love. I can't base it solely on how good he is or how well he treats me. I can't base it solely on what my friends and family say. I have to make sure that God is good with all of this. And so in conclusion, I know it's a lot and I know it's a big, big, big decision. And I know that, I know that for me, I can be scared because well for me transparency moment i have a fear that it will be great right and i know that sounds weird and i know that sounds like why are you afraid of something being great because if this thing works out if this thing is great that means i'm going to have to be open i'm going to have to be transparent i'm going to have to be vulnerable i'm going to have to share my feelings and all this stuff all the time for the rest of my life And am I really in a place where I can do that consistently, where I can do that honestly, where I can do that, where I can be open and vulnerable and honest and share and all that stuff with this person, like true intimacy with one person for the rest of my life? Can I share not just my body, but bear my soul, bear my cares and my worries and my concerns to him and to God? You know, can I honestly keep God as the head of my life with a husband. Like that's my dream. That's my goal. That's what I really want. That's what I desire. But the fear is what if I can't, what if this thing is great and fantastic and I forget God? What if I, this thing is great and fantastic and I forget my husband because I'm so focused on trying to please God. So I'm just saying that's my experience. That's where I am right now. And that's why I had to go to God and was like, okay, God, you have to give me these steps. You have to show me how I will know. And he, for a long time, he just said, you'll know when you know. And I was like, okay, God, I'll know when I know. And he's shown me that I will know because the guy's going to have, he's going to be a good character. He's going to display the fruits of the spirit he's going to be a godly man my friends will approve god will approve when i take a step back our purposes align you know our goals align i love i'm in love with this man you know so once i know once i can move forward with with that then i think comes the real hard work right then comes marriage which people have said all the time isn't easy which is why i also encourage you to get some married people around you some married couples who have the kind of relationship you want now i'm not saying you want their relationship specifically but they have the characteristics and they have you know they display some of the things that you want to have in your future marriage and ask them questions glean from their wisdom and not acknowledge them compliment them and compliment i mean you know say nice things about them say hey i really admire this about your marriage about your relationship how how do you do that how did you know this was the person you were supposed to marry you know ask a bunch of questions and and because god gives us wisdom when we ask for it and sometimes we're always you know expecting him to beam down this wisdom but sometimes it's right next to us in that couple that's been married for 40 years that couple that's been married for 15 years that couple that has been married and they love each other with the love of god and their purposes aligned and they're moving forward and they're great people and they're spreading god's love so i think it's very important for all of us as single people to have marriage um, or married people in our lives that we can glean from that we can um, at, get wisdom from that we can ask about their knowledge we can ask about you know they don't have to divulge everything in in their marriage to us but we can just ask how did you know why did you do this what is you know how can i position myself to be a better wife how can he position himself to be a, you know a husband 
So I just think it's very important that we get to that place where we are asking very serious questions and get to the place where we can be asked those questions. Because I don't think you should ask a question that you cannot answer. So if you are asking yourself, hey, do I really love him? What do I feel about him? Is, can, will, um, what do my friends and family say about him? What does God say about him? He should be asking the exact same questions about you. And you have to make sure that you're up to snuff as well. You have to make sure that you are doing, you know, everything you can to meet all the requirements too, because not only are you God's daughter, but he's God's son right? God not going to give him no trash. Like he not going to give you no trash. Both of y'all are a treasure. Both of y'all are created in God's image. Both of y'all are loved deeply by God. So you sis have to make sure that you are up to snuff. You sis have to make sure that you got good character. You sis have to make sure that God approves of you for his son. So all these things that you're asking, you have to make sure that you are that as well. And if you find out if you're dating someone and you're serious and you're in an exclusive relationship with one and you've asked yourself all these questions and you say yes to them all god approves my friend and family approve he's got great character our purposes align when i take a step back objectively and look at him i can say yes um he don't get on my nerves too bad you know all these things then i think you found a great spouse so congratulations so if you can relate to this in any way or if you have anything to add if god has revealed to you something else that would make a good spouse or another question of where you would know who your spouse is or what he's doing or whatever um if god has revealed to you how you would know please contact me please like please comment please share please just um get in contact with me and i would love 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 to hear your story so you can get in contact with me on instagram and facebook at single in christ you can also get in contact with me on my website at singleinchrist.org and as always please in everything you do be led by the holy spirit be led by the holy spirit he won't ever lead you wrong he won't ever lead you astray and if you also feel led, please donate to WITV7 Christian Broadcasters Network by either going to their Facebook page or going to the website WITV7.org. I love you all and thank you for joining me for another broadcast of Single Infant Christ. And I will see you all next time. Bye.